So I'm David Johnson and I served nine months in prison between the years of 2009 and 2010. It was a difficult place to be, um, not just for myself, but I thought of everyone, friends, family, how they felt through it all. And I think that's the thing that gets you the most is that you're in that situation, you're helpless. There's nothing you can do. If anything happens, you can't come to someone's aid, you can't console somebody. Um, you know, if your friends are in trouble, you can't help them, you're, you're stuck. You hear about it, but there's nothing you can do. So adding prison to the list of challenges that I already had in my life, um, you know, I could have done without it. You know, it made things so much harder. I wouldn't wish that for anybody. So if I could go back and speak to my younger self, I would definitely make sure that prison was never an option. I think one thing that people don't touch on when it comes to talking about prison is the mental anguish and how much it affects you mentally. I mean, you see things on TV, you see things on social media, you hear people talk about their stories and it's always glorifying what happens inside, but they don't talk about how they feel when the door closes at night when all you can hear is keys jingling in this big empty place, but it's full. It's so, it's so weird how somewhere that's so full and packed with prisoners can feel so empty and cold and isolated. But hearing that at night, I remember just trying to sleep and just hearing keys just all night, just keys jingling as the, the officers were walking up and down um, the wing. So it, it really does test you as a person. Another emotional thing, spending a birthday in prison with a bunch of strangers, your family can only see you for one hour. No birthday cakes, no party, no music, no dancing, nothing. You've just got four visitors and they've got an hour and they can just about touch you because if there's too much contact or physical communication, it could be deemed as trying to pass stuff into the prison, which then leads on to strip searches and so on. So it was quite cold and reserved, but it was a birthday. I think for me, I needed that moment of the phone call and seeing my family's face. It was just so good to see them and hug them and hold them and see their face. I think like going back to just overall how I felt while I was inside. I think the best way to describe it is Groundhog Day. Even though time is moving forward, for you time stays still. So I knew on the other side of the walls, there was birthdays, there was weddings, funerals, there was parties, um, people moving homes, people getting dogs. My dog was out on the outside and I knew that I couldn't be involved with what was going on outside. So for me, I was living the same day over and over and over again with some small changes, which might be a visit or it could have been the education. Um, but that was literally it. You lived the same day over and over and over and over again. And it was just horrible like because you can't i think we take freedom for granted um and that's what people don't appreciate when you're not able to do normal things like go to the corner shop um, even leave your room on your own accord um, go out the house visit friends make a phone call when you want send a message watch youtube um, all of that stuff is taken away from you you're literally stripped from reality and life outside. You know what is inside the prison walls and that is it, that is your reality. And I think that's the hardest part of being imprisoned is you're not only physically imprisoned, but you're mentally imprisoned. The glorious day when I was released, um, the first night I spent at home and obviously I've gone to bed as normal and I've woken up the next morning to await someone to open my bedroom door because that's what I was used to. You know, my mum would call and say, breakfast is ready, and I would just lay there and wait for someone to come and let me out of my room. At the time, it felt normal to me, but my family had no idea 
what I was going through. I was just waiting to hear someone's keys jingle and my door to open. I had no lock on my door, but mentally, that's all I could think of was that I can't leave this room till somebody lets me out of it. And, you know, I struggled with that for maybe three, four weeks before I was able to just come out of my room by myself. Um, bearing in mind, it was weird because I didn't have a toilet in my bedroom where you have a toilet in your cell, but still I would wait for someone to let me out to go and use the toilet. It was, it was a weird and very emotional time and, and for them as well, even though I was out, I wasn't fully released. I was still locked in this prison in my mind. And I think that's what people don't realize Yes, you come out and, you know, you probably see lots of videos on Snapchat, Instagram. Yeah, free the man, them, he's out. And they come out and they go to the local club or pub or whatever and they pop in champagne. But what you don't see is what happens after that. You know, the fact that life doesn't just continue as normal because your life as you knew it is not what everybody else was living. Technology changes, roads change, pubs change, shops change and you were stuck doing the same thing every single day. So you can go out that night and enjoy yourself, but when you go back home to that peace and quiet, or what you think is peace and quiet, because I still heard keys jingling for a few weeks after I left prison, and, and people don't talk about that side of things and how it affects them. So not everybody can survive prison. I always say to people, don't worry about what you see on TV and what you see in the films. If you know someone who's been through it, ask them. Because prison isn't for everybody. Not everyone can go through prison and come out the other side. And sometimes people miss that so much and that's the reason why they go back. Not because they want to re-offend, but because all they know is prison. All they know is the keys jingling. All they know is the cell doors. All they know is the wing. All they know is the govs. So being outside for them is alien. Being inside for them is a safe place. So talk to people who have been there, who are gonna give you, you know, real life, give you a real recollection of their stories, how they felt, their emotions. That's very important.